My dearly beloved in Christ, today's parable, today's gospel contains a parable that our Lord told on at least two occasions. Today's version is recorded by St. Luke in chapter 14 and was spoken during a dinner with the Pharisees in the Pharisees' house. The second time we read this gospel, this parable, it is recorded by St. Matthew in chapter 22 and has a little bit of a change to it, an addition, where the king came into the feast and found a man who had not on a wedding garment, and he cast him forth out of the banquet hall. But on both of these occasions, we read a story of a great feast, a great banquet, and the man, the king, or the owner of the house, obviously quite a wealthy man, out of his goodness, wanted to put on a wonderful banquet for the townsmen. He apparently had a large hall, and it was decked out very nicely and filled with tables, decorated. He hired the best chefs and prepared this wonderful banquet, invited by personal invitation the leading men of the city, And when it came to the day for the banquet, he sent out his servant, his servants, to go to those that were invited and to say to them, come to the banquet hall, the banquet is now ready, or just about ready. And they all began to make excuses. One of them said, I have bought a farm, and I'm going out to see it. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I'm going to try them. And the third said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. And we find in all of these excuses, symbols of the very excuses that Christians make, why they cannot or will not live a good Catholic life, why they will not live a life of grace, because of their attachment to things of this earth, or to the pleasures of life. Now, the banquet hall, the banquet, can be applied in two ways. First of all, there is the Eucharistic banquet. There is the body and blood of Christ in Holy Communion that the King, our Lord himself, prepares for us. And he invites us to come and receive him in Holy Communion. And that is certainly a wonderful application. Note that in the parable as told by St. Matthew, there was a man who had not on a wedding garment. And the king was angry because he did not have on the wedding garment, which signifies the life of sanctifying grace. And a reminder from our Lord that we dare not approach the communion rail tainted with a mortal sin. That we must always treat the body and blood of Christ with the greatest reverence. True, we're never entirely worthy of receiving our Lord in Holy Communion. But as long as we are in the state of grace and we have the right intention, as Pope St. Pius X said, we may and should receive our Lord in Holy Communion as devoutly as we can, that we might obtain the graces we need to live a better life, to grow spiritually, and to persevere. But this parable has another application, and that is to the eternal happiness of heaven. Because the banquet is a time when there is a large gathering of people, they're eating the best foods, there's music, there's happiness, there is a joy, a joyous occasion. And that is a very faint expression of the everlasting happiness with God in heaven. Of course, the king or the owner of this, the man who sponsors this banquet, is a symbol of our Heavenly Father who prepares the happiness of heaven and he invites us. We received a personal invitation to enter the kingdom of heaven when our time comes. And what is that invitation? It is baptism. 
It is our entrance into the Catholic Church, into the mystical body of Christ. So we received that invitation. We received baptism. We received membership in the church. But now, are we on our way into the banquet hall to enjoy this great feast? Or are we like those who were invited and who began to make excuses? Yes, I know the banquet is wonderful, but I'm interested in something else. Yes, I know the kingdom of heaven is wonderful, but I'm still attached to the things of this world, and I don't want to give them up. How many are like that? They are too consumed with material things and the pleasures of life. And that is more important to them than the salvation of their soul. How sad, but yet... That is a reality. So many souls called, you might say personally invited, are far from the path to the banquet hall, the path to heaven. The fathers of the church, theologians, commentators on scripture, find in these three excuses the various types of pitfalls of material things, material pursuits, seeking honor and pleasures and so forth that keep people back from the kingdom of heaven. Let us beware of our fallen human nature, its attachments to the things of this world, the natural inclination to become attached to this world, and rather keep our eyes focused on our goal, which is heaven. Now, Those who received the invitation, many of them did not come. And the man who had prepared all of this food, these after all were his friends, and he was angry because they rejected this invitation. They knew this well ahead of time. They could have notified him well in advance if they were unable to attend. But they had flimsy excuses. And he was angry for that reason. But there was all this food prepared. There was so much room in the banquet hall. So he sent his servants out to the streets and lanes of the city. And he said, bring in the blind and the lame and the crippled, (coughs) the beggars, the poor, so that my banquet can be filled. We are like those beggars and blind and lame. We all know our spiritual defects. We know our struggles. And those struggles are like a handicap, like the blindness or the lameness, the the state of the cripple. And yet, God loves us and invites us and desires us to receive him and to be one day with him in heaven. He invites us to the banquet. The banquet in this life is... Of course, not only Holy Communion, but all of the sacraments, the sacramental life of the church to share in this life. So even though we didn't deserve it, we are asked to come and to take the place of those who had that invitation and rejected it. I often think of that going back some 40 years or so to the aftermath of Vatican II when there were so many priests and religious that we knew attending their mass, nuns that taught us in school and so forth. And we saw them abandon the Catholic faith in their religious life and follow a new religion. And we can think to ourselves, I have been given someone else's place, someone else, whether priest or layperson or religious, who left the faith, I have been given that person's place. So, all of these blind and beggars and poor people and lame are welcomed in. But then the servant said, Master, we have brought in all of those people and still there is room in the banquet hall. And then the king said, Go forth into the highways and the byways, into the various off-the-beaten-path alleyways and find whomever you can and compel them to come in so that my 
house will be filled so that the banquet hall will be filled with guests who can partake of this great feast that I have prepared. And that's a wonderful saying in the gospel in Latin, the compelle entrare, compel them to come in. And it shows how our Lord pursues us even when we are turning away from him. He pursues and comes after us with his grace, with our conscience. When we are wandering, he doesn't abandon us. He doesn't say, oh, how sad that this particular child of mine has turned his back on me and is running after the world. He doesn't abandon us. Rather, he pursues us with his grace, with the invitations of the inspirations of the Holy Ghost that we receive, the conscience that is after us to repent, to amend, and to return to our Father's house. So a wonderful expression, compel them to come in. And God does that with us, does he not? He compels us by his grace. And yet still there are many who would rather stay outside and suffer from hunger rather than to partake of the banquet, of the graces, the sacraments, the wonderful spiritual goods that our Heavenly Father has prepared for us. So let us accept and follow up on the invitation and recognize the tremendous grace and blessing that has been given to us by our invitation and be certain that we continue to live our faith persevere to the end that we might join our heavenly father the, all of the saints and angels in that heavenly banquet which will last for all eternity in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost amen